Unfortunately, due to weather conditions, uh, all these flights in and out are a little bit disrupted. Uh, Roxana is sorry she couldn't make it, her flight got cancelled. So let's talk together regarding the courage to ischemia translation and obviously in anticipation of the ischemia trial results in, um, uh, in November uh, during AHA 2019. So the main question is how to select patients who benefit from PCI. Wh what, what does this benefit mean? Is it relief of symptoms? reduction in repeat procedures, or MI, reduction in mortality. In our minds, at the very least, we have to be very clear in order to answer patient questions and make rational decisions. And also, you compare PCI to exactly what? To nothing, to optimal medical therapy. What does that mean if patients resent taking medications, for example, or if they have side effects? Bypass surgery, all of the above. Anyhow, we're going to go through all of that. So for any trial and of this, of this question or around this subject, we really have to, before you say anything about the study, understand what they meant about benefit and what exactly they compared PCI to. And obviously, who they excluded, what the selection criteria, who, how generalizable this study could be based on exactly how the study was conducted. All right, so these are various studies. Uh, you can see how they came about, 2005, 2007, Barry Courage, Barry Fame II, Orbita, very small study, coming 2019, ischemia. So let's go to Courage with stable CAD, with some unstable CAD that was stabilized medically. So if you want to do PCI on someone with troponin positive same day, that's not your study. Very clear. Coronary changes they had to have at least a 70% stenosis and some ischemia, or 80% with classic angina. Who knows exactly what that means and how good we are to judge between 70 and 80%. Anyhow, they judged the ischemia based on a uh, stress test or on substantial changes or EKG at rest. All right? And what happened is that as a strategy in those patients that you can stabilize medically or they have chronic stable angina, it's okay to go first with optimal medical therapy and see how that goes. And about a third of them will end up requiring PCI even in this trial. And let's get assured that in this trial is probably the only trial that did tremendously great job in following other patients and really stacking one medication on top of another to, with a rate of medication use that people say is actually unparalleled. All right, let's go now to Barry 2D. What's that? Diabetes with stable CAD, at least a 50% stenosis with ischemia and a positive stress test essentially, okay? Not much difference between revascularization versus medical therapy. Indiscriminate type of revascularization was left up to the doctors, whether to do PCI or whether to do bypass. And obviously, the more uh, extensive CAD got bypass. But anyhow, again, you can see that as a strategy in the stable patient, you can go down the medical therapy. And if you have breakthrough problems, you can end up doing the PCI. To say up front, I'm not going to try medical therapy and I'm going to go straight to PCI, that didn't pan out to be true in these two trials. And that's not what we do anyhow. Now, we have newer ways to test ischemia, and many people have ambiguous exp exp experiences with a non-invasive stress test, for example, and we use a lot of uh, FFR, physiologic clinical assessment, in the cath lab. And then FAME2 came about and say, you know what? We have the FFR that is positive, then let's see how that goes in a courage type population and see if we have a, this assessment in the cath lab. Can we, make that, can we make that a difference now instead of using only angio-guided PCI? And interestingly, this study was interrupted early by the DSMB. That's unfortunate because we don't know exactly what would happen with death and particularly with MI. The study was interrupted early. It was a clear benefit of reduced revascularization, repeat procedures, urgent admissions for uh, refractory symptoms, or recurrent symptoms, I would say, and they decided to stop it. This decision by the DSMB had um, 
has been criticized widely, and perhaps as a mace, it was significant, but it was isolated to the repeat procedure, repeat vascularization. Then the orbit that came about in stable CAD, a very small study with single vessel disease with a 70% stenosis, and they got uh, underwent blinded evaluations of um, uh, stress tests and, and the FFRIFR, and they tried to figure out what's going on in the future. That, again, was an increase in total exercise time. Uh, however, it wasn't statistically significant. This is one of the situations that the study design was criticized because maybe it was too small. So although there is a sizable increase, nearly doubling of the, of the uh, uh, exercise time difference by the PCI, somehow this didn't get, um, um, you know, didn't have enough patients in the study. There were, as you see, 80 and, 80 and 60 patients nearly in this, uh, in this population. And clearly very small to even go and say, you know, what happened with clinical symptoms and uh, things like that. So ultimately, everyone is expecting the results of the ischemia trial, which is uh, uh, based on moderate ischemia on stress testing and CAD. All right? And then randomize these patients into, um, um, uh, into the optimal medical therapy as a strategy first or PCI right away. This is the first trial that had mandated that ischemia is present at least at the moderate degree. Uh, this trial took, took essentially forever to, to uh, enroll. The, the endpoint has been revised a couple of times and the sample size has been downgraded a couple of size, a couple of times in order to be able to actually finish. So we're going to see the final results in the final, actually, I would say, deliberations of that study in November this year. Clearly, the, uh, the generalizability will be somewhat limited by the fact that the enrollment was very, very low, uh, although the, the trial centers were very many in very many countries. Um, and you can see there were other uh, aspects that were added later on in the, in the trial that uh, they had to have a, um, um, uh, less, uh, not much resting symptoms, uh, not much resting EKG changes because many doctors were not putting patients with resting abnormal EKG into this study. Uh, they included uh, a, a CTA uh, possibilities as well uh, in order to kind of liberalize a little bit the practice and address the fact of the slow enrollment. I don't want to go too much in the detail, but everybody stay tuned for November 2019 and onward, and we'll, I'm sure we'll discuss and debrief this, uh, this trial results next year here again. Um, the, um, again, you can see they have a total of uh, over 5,000 patients, imaging stress tests nearly 4,000, exercise tolerance tests, they had about 1,300 patients, and uh, this is the breakdown, uh, two-thirds uh, uh, female, two -thirds male, I mean, three-quarters male, 20% uh, uh, female, and uh, the primary endpoint uh, liberalized instead of death or MI, now includes heart failure, resuscitated cardiac arrest, secondary endpoints include angina, scores, etc. And the sample size was 8,000 and now has been downgraded to 5,000 in order to make the end of this trial and the conclusion of this trial realistic by the NIH guidelines. Um, I think everybody clearly uh, is anticipating this trial. So I think uh, in view of that, let's brush up on all these trials that just uh, um, um, presented you briefly, the courage, the body to do, the orbiter, you're going to we need to ask questions about it. You need to understand what they're all about in order to better comprehend the ischemia trial results. And let's try to stay tuned for HA 2019, and let's try to always uh, use the AUC criteria that, that is the first objective criteria that put a lot of weight into ischemia in our pre-procedure assessment for any PCI in a very systematic way. And I'm sure this change happened already maybe five or six years ago, is widespread in all the cath labs and it has been a good thing. How much a good thing? We're about to find out in November. Thank you for your attention.